Good evening. Three days ago, on the 8th, I made this video. I was talking about Officer Greg Anderson because all of the microcephalic civics class dropouts were making videos about him. And my caution then was that officers aren't equipped to make determinations about what is or isn't a constitutional rights violation, unless it's very blatant. And that's the same reason why officers have qualified immunity. If it's a blatant violation of constitutional rights, the officer should know. But if it's a questionable one, then we're not placing the officers in that position. That's not their role. That's not their job. And in this video, I went through some of the steps that the court might look at to determine a an otherwise um, what appears to be like a blatant violation of First Amendment rights, i.e. Bill de Blasio's order outlawing protests in New York City. You know, the, the court is still going to go through the strict scrutiny analysis for that. The court's going to look at, at the government interest. Is it a compelling enough government interest? They're going to look to make sure that it's viewpoint neutral. It is viewpoint neutral as far as I can tell. They're going to look to see whether it's narrowly tailored and the least restrictive method of achieving that compelling government interest. They may find that it is the the government interest is that they're trying to stop the spread of COVID-19. The court may find that is compelling enough. The court may find that stopping people from congregating in protests is a compelling enough interest to outlaw protests during this crisis. Now, for, for the microcephalic people in my comment sections who can't seem to understand a word I say, I want to emphasize a court might find that. That's not what I want the court to find. I personally abhor this whole COVID-19 reaction that we're having, and I abhor Bill de Blasio's attempt to outlaw protests. But a court might disagree with me, and I have to be prepared for that. Now, I have gone through law school, and I have passed the bar exam, and I've been a practicing attorney now for at least a full year, and I can't tell you which way a court's going to go on it. I make arguments why I believe a court would go that certain things are unconstitutional, but I can't be certain, and you can't be certain. If you think you're certain, you are the poster child for Dunning-Kruger. You're not certain. I mean, you might think you're certain, but you're not. You don't know what a court's going to do. I don't know what a court's going to do. You get 50 attorneys in a room and you'll get 100 different opinions on which way the court's going to go. There's, there's always, and you know what? District courts can't always anticipate it. That's why there's circuit courts. Circuit courts can't always anticipate it. That's why it's the Supreme Court. And sometimes subsequent Supreme Courts will overturn previous Supreme Courts. So you just can't know. So today, these dunderheads all presumably uh, film these and monetize them. I don't know. I'm not going to uh, watch without ad blocker on. And they, of course, are going to jump immediately to conspiracy theories about this is a good cop and what he says is good. And it's all, all because, you know, bad cops are in control and they're trying to take away your freedoms, right? Well, here's the video and I can play it here because, thank God, uh, it's not entirely um, copy protected on this part, so Earl can't strike me. But I actually don't think I'm going to play it. Here at 551, the link will be in the description, but here at 551, you can play it for yourself. And he believes, you know, that the Constitution is the uh, supreme law of the land. And you know what? He is correct. He's right. And I agree with him on that point. And he goes on to cite Marbury versus Madison. This is uh, Marbury versus Madison. And he goes on to cite it for uh, the for the Supreme Court holding that it is the supreme law of the land. And he is right. It is the supreme law of the land. Um, the Constitution is superior to any ordinary act of the legislature. The Constitution, not such ordinary act, must govern the case to which they both apply. That right there. That right there. 
So he's right. But what he doesn't do is he doesn't continue to read Marbury versus Madison because Marbury versus Madison continues somewhere down here, deep in the bowels. It also says that if you want to read it again, the link will be in the description. This is also up in the uh, in the syllabus section right above what we just read. Uh, it is emphatically the duty of the judicial department to say what the law is. So you don't have to go all the way down here. But I'm just showing you that this is actual text of the case, not a syllabus, which is not text of the case. But it is emphatically the province and the duty of the judicial department to say what the law is. Those who apply the rule to particular cases must, of necessity, expound and interpret that rule. If two laws conflict with each other, the courts must decide on the operation of each. So one of the, one of the things that the courts will do is the courts will determine if a, a law is in conflict with the Constitution, but they will also make every attempt to interpret that law in such a fashion as that it doesn't run afoul of the Constitution. But for those of you who are more visual learners, let me just show you this. And this is from uh, USA.gov. So I think I'm I think I'm OK showing this. Uh, but this is the executive branch right here. You can see all three branches are under the Constitution, which provided the separation of power. But the executive branch is the enforcement. They carry out the laws. They enforce the law. And down here, underneath the cabinet, down here would be the police. Obviously, the, uh, the Port of Seattle Police Department would be under the Port of Seattle, which is under Seattle, I think which is under the governor of, or which is under the state of Washington. But they have, even Washington is broken out. It's a republic. So there's an executive branch, there's a legislative branch, and there's a judicial branch. This is the same for every state. In every state, in every state the police department is under the executive branch. They enforce the law. Now, if you look over here, this is the judicial department. They interpret the law. State courts are in here, too. The lowest state court, well, at least in California, your state may vary. The lowest state court can overturn the governor. They can say, no, governor, your order is unconstitutional for the California Constitution, it's unconstitutional for the federal Constitution, whichever Constitution it's run afoul of. They may even say, no, Governor, your order is running afoul of the legislation, the current legislation on the books. Your order is contradictory to that legislation. And therefore, the legislation, not your order, is the law, is what we're going to operate under. That is the function of the judiciary branch. So that's why that's why this cop is in a bad position. He is saying to other officers to use their judgment to to place themselves in the role of the judiciary to determine whether or not an order given by by their superior is constitutional. That's what he's in trouble for. He's in trouble because he's telling other officers to be insubordinate. And then when he's told to take it down, he himself was insubordinate. That's the issue. That's the problem. It's his message is fine. We should have we should obey the constitution. We should follow it. Until he gets to the point where he has placed himself and other officers in the position of determining what laws are and are not constitutional, because that's not his role. And I just want to caution everybody. Everybody thinks that, you know, that they know what constitutional is. Everybody makes just general statements of this is constitutional because it just obviously is. But I have to caution you that governors and mayors and presidents They've got lawyers all around them who are advising them, who are who they bounce these things off of. And they say, hey, can I do this? And you get a bunch of junior attorneys rushing down into law libraries or firing up Westlaw on their computers, digging through case law, digging through 
uh, precedent trying to find out whether or not they can do it. And a lot of times there are no clear answers. You've got this case which says X, this case which says Y. So if you extrapolate from X and Y, you get Z, right? Well, someone else might look at it and say, well, this case says Y and this case says X. So, you know, if you, if you subtract it down, you get W. No, it's Z. No, it's W. No, it's Z. No, it's W. And then you have, you know, another attorney with, well, actually, it's J. You know, it, it's... Again, if you if you got 100 or 50 different attorneys in a room and he asked them whether or not a specific order from a from a governor was constitutional or not, you'd get 100 different answers. So that's why he's in trouble. That's why he's getting fired. He was giving multiple given multiple opportunities to withdraw the video. He chose not to do so. You know, you make your bed, you got to stick to it. I don't think he's a bad guy. I'm not trying to throw this guy under the bus. I think he believes that these orders are unconstitutional. And that's fine. He can believe that. But he can't be insubordinate about it. So thanks for watching. I look forward to the innumerable references to Nazis and Nuremberg trials in my comment section. Uh, your hysteria will be noted. Have a great day.